everybody and welcome back again to Let's Play God of War where we are currently doing a bit of a detour from the detour because we came here to destroy a statue of Thor and now we're trying to free a dragon and in a sense we are even doing a detour from that because currently we are exploring this um, ancient dwarven fortress and <laughs> apparently the skeleton came back after reloading as a matter of fact, I also had to kill the Tutselworms again because apparently it didn't save that part of the progress. But yeah, um, I guess we're just going to move on with that right away and see what else we can find in here. And then hopefully we can go back to looking for the final shrine. Ooh, look at these guys over there. But first, Boy. let's yes, sir. look at this. The Dwarf King made his subjects hunt dragons and other monsters for him? Some king, huh? <laughs> Indeed. The hunt for death. We baited the beast with a stuck fawn. Her cries echoed on the morning breeze. It did not take long for Death Hammer to approach. The smell of burnt grass, the bleating of a dying fawn, the fear of imminent death. Many could not hold their breakfast. When it stepped into the clearing, our attack was swift. The vanguard died instantly, burned to ash. No time to react, the hunt continued as we led the enraged troll to the Lake of Nine. There we subdued it, but not before losing thirty more men. Upon our return, King Motsoknia proclaimed a week of celebration. The festivities were sparsely attended, though not for lack of pride in the victory. The population of Vedogard had just been reduced by a quarter. I fear this sad irony was lost on the dwarf, Berthold. Well, quite a costly hunt, huh? Okay, um... I guess... We gotta deal with these guys now. Alright. I got some shield guys here, but... I guess... Well placed wounds will take care of them. Alright. There we go. Um, and I think I can pick up some stuff over here. Alright, uh, anything else around here that I want to pick up? If not, let's take a look at the big door. Uh, Father, you may want to see this. Looks like that lever over there will free him. He will attack. I know, but he feels wrong to keep something caged like this. Your emotions again, boy. You can't hear their thoughts. I can't. Ignore them and. Ready yourself to Okay, okay so, so we're going to do this. Who are you talking to anyway? Just praying to your stone? Okay, this is a lever. Got some crystal in here. Also, what are these statues, I wonder? Talking about Gidungagab, the primordial void where creation happened. <laughs> and I think he also mentioned Ymir. Is he just like reciting the poetic Edda? <laughs> Probably. But okay, um, I think that's really all we can do here at the moment. Let's free the troll and prepare for battle. Dordi Hamada, okay. Um. 
Well, I mean, these are the kinds of battles that I'm saving my rage for, so let's use it up right away and get in some good damage here. All right, I think we're done with the rage for the time being. Now, let's continue. Can use a few runes. And okay, we did we did some good damage here, but we will have to do a lot more. <laughs> okay, um, how do we want to do this? I mean, you can use a few of your arrows, and I'm on my way again. <laughs> Right. Hm. I mean, we do have some cover in here. Oh well, but um, the cover is not giving a lot of cover, apparently. Yeah, I'm not sure if one arrow is like more useful on on this guy than the other. Anyway. Let's use my two runes again. Okay, there we go. We can go in for the kill, hopefully. And done. That was a short uh, time of freedom. What is the beast thinking now? Well, nothing. <laughs> but he was grateful to die in battle. Okay. Instead of rotting in a cage. Well, your skill is improving. In that case, I think we did a good deed here. Dordi Hammer. We found Dordi Hammer trapped in a cage in Vaithogard. The Dwarf King had managed to capture him somehow. Why was he in this cage? We could have just let him rot down there, but even for a troll, that felt too cruel. Okay. So I guess a death in battle is better than uh, pr in prison. You fought well, Atreus. Thank you, Father. Well, look at that. He's actually praising him for a change. Let's see, what do we got here? Vivarium Keystone. Okay. Some hex silver, wall up and scale. Horn of Heimdall, rare talisman. Unleash a powerful attack that inflicts stun damage and knocks back nearby enemies. Also has a passive effect that reduces this talisman's cooldown on successful blocks and parries. Well, I may actually want to use this one. Um, but I will first go back to Brock or Sindri and maybe upgrade it. So we will take a look at that later. But that sounds like pretty useful useful talisman um yeah i remember we had like another health crystal somewhere around here so i'm going to use this one because we still have the dragon that we may have to fight okay um i guess i can okay i can use keystone All right. Death happened here. What a random achievement. Light runic attack, a powerful axe throw that plows through any enemies in its path. Um, I'll have a look at the preview. Okay. Ah, I just, I just got a new one and I do enjoy this one. I'm not entirely sure if I like it more than Fury of the Ice Troll, but um, before I start upgrading more runes, I think I will keep using this one for for a while. Anyway, let me destroy this over here for some additional hex silver. Okay. It sounds like the dragon is really, really close. Ah, oh, 
That sure feels good. Um, the dragon is really, really close. <laughs> it is basically right, right next to us. So where the hell is that final shrine? Oh, it's it's somewhere to the left of me from my current position. Okay. Um. Well, at the moment, we seem to be safe here. I'm not sure how long that's going to remain this way. Okay, so. Um. The shrine is over here. Sometimes the compass is more confusing than helpful. But I'm pretty sure I have not been here yet. What do you mean? As far as I can tell, nothing is happening. Oh, well, there we go. That's the final shrine we're looking for. But the dragon found us again and he is he's is not happy. Come on. I'm just I'm just trying to help you, you know? That's the last one. I guess now we find out if dragons can be grateful or not. Well Gotta stay on the move though, because at the moment he is not grateful. Anyway, I think I left behind some stuff over here. So let's quickly go back and pick up all that is useful. <laughs> there we go. Um, okay. Okay, apparently I have to go back to where the chain is. Uh, it's kind of a magical chain, right? So... Well, um... I guess we will find out how grateful you are. Either you will just leave us alone, or we will have to kill you as well, like we did with a troll. Anyway, let's do this. What are you doing? The camera is kind of Please don't eat us. stuck on a Please weird don't eat us. angle. Right. Prepare yourself. Uh oh. Uh oh! Please don't eat us! <laughs> okay. Well. You're welcome! <laughs> Looks like it's not going to eat us. Brilliant mark of a dragon. Rare enchantment. Sprinting for three seconds grants unstoppable aura. Preventing interruptions by enemy attacks. Oh, huh. neat. So, there we go. Dragon favor complete. Apparently, we can indeed free dragons. Three of them. Alright, noted. Um, yeah, looks like we're done with this problem. <laughs> Mom once told me a story about Otter. He was a dwarf who could turn into an otter, which is how he got his name, I guess. <laughs> is this the same Otter? How did he become a dragon? I'd ask father, but I know he doesn't care. <laughs> it's when I have so many questions like this, this is when I miss mother the most. Yeah, um, sadly, Kratos doesn't really have the curiosity to care about stuff like that. Oh, um, well, <laughs> this guy is not grateful at all that we treat him for his Whoa. imprisonment. Anyway, but I think um, that wouldn't be the only, the only dwarf that turned into a dragon. I think it happened to Fafni as well. I'm, I'm vaguely familiar with that, with that legend. Anyway, um, yep, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff around here that I couldn't really pick up because the dragon was firing us at us all the time. And I still need to find runes for the rune chest. So I will spend a few more minutes in this area 
trying to find the runes and maybe some loot that I missed. And um, I guess I'll bring you back once I'm done or if I find anything else of interest. Alright, I found the runes. I also found a rage crystal that I um, left behind the last time, so should be able to open the chest now. Um, ooh. You see what we can trade those for? Apparently I missed this one too when I was here the first time. But yeah, my set is complete. How unusual. So, let's open the chest. Okay, another horn of blood meat. At the moment, that isn't really doing anything for me, but eventually it will. But yeah, um, I think I'm good to go. I mean, I remember I left behind a number of crystals inside the Dwarven Fortress, but I don't really need any of those at the moment anyway. And... I think, I think we're looking good. So, what happened to all the people who lived here? Follow the clues, boy. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Follow the clues. <laughs> okay, so there was an evil Dwarf King, and he made all these people hunt monsters. The people put them in cages, and then... And then I don't know. Hmm. We are missing a clue. Back inside the castle? No. There is nothing more for us inside. But stay alert for Chain Dragons, boy. Perhaps you'll uncover more about this Dwarf King. Well, maybe the people got sick of their king and... They got rid of him and left this place. I mean... Clearly the troll and the dragon didn't escape, so it's not like they killed the people. So it's maybe the people killing each other. But yeah, um, I guess we can go back to our original task, which is to destroy the statue. So yeah, I think, I think we're good to go. Alright, this has got to be it. I mean, he told us not to confuse it Mir, with a statue. What can you tell me about that giant lady with the bow? Oh. She was called Skadi, ah, here we go. Queen of the Hunt. Her father was Thiotzi, who could take the shape of any wild creature, and taught Skadi how to hunt them all. From the ribs of pack beasts, she fashioned second feet, allowing her to glide upon the snow so no animal could evade her. <laughs> she became a huntress beyond compare, even to any god. Odin himself wanted her for his bride, believing she would bear him strong sons. But she spurned his affections, and for that insult, Odin vowed revenge. It was put forth that the Aesir were plagued by an eagle who would steal the precious golden apples of Idun. Not even the finest archer among the gods could bring it down. Odin knew that Skadi could not resist the temptation to prove herself superior, and so she joined the hunt. Skadi tracked the eagle as it flew where she alone could glide, and loosed an arrow from her unerring bow. When she collected her quarry, she found no eagle at all, but her own father, poor Theotzi, slain by his own daughter. She was overcome with grief and shame. For there is nothing nature so reviles as a child who kills their parent. Hmm. Skadi succumbed to her fate as winter's blanket fell, holding her father as the mountain held her in an embrace to last eternity. Well, that was sad. <laughs> Aye. There aren't many happy endings for the giants, I'm afraid. Well, I mean, again, there were some elements, like, you know, the eagle stealing the golden apples from the original mythology, but 
everything else was rather different. And, you know, there's one thing that I'm kind of curious about. Um, I mean, Kratos has been very vocal about his hatred of gods. And apparently this hatred is on a fundamental level, not a personal one. So it doesn't matter who this god is. And even if they are quote-unquote good gods like the Vanya, he hates them all. But so far, um, he hasn't really voiced any opinions about um, the Jotna for some reason. And the, 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 the game, or Mime in particular, seems to make a difference between Skadi and the gods, like it's different categories. But in a sense, Skadi was also revered as a goddess, so you could say the Jotna are just as much gods as the Aesir and the Vanya are. Um, they are kind of like um, comparable to the titans of Greek mythology, like an older race of gods that were replaced by a younger race of gods. But um, for some reason, Kratos doesn't really seem to think of them as gods. Even though, especially within the lore of this game, there shouldn't really be that much of a difference between the Aesir and the Vani and the Jotna, because Mimir did um, at least imply that all of these races come from uh, Ymir, who was a Jotun, so they're basically all the same, at least on a material level, right? So I wonder, what is Kratos' definition of God? Why does he hate the Aesir and the Vani on principle, no matter what they do and how their morality is or whatever? But he doesn't seem to care about the Jotna at all, even though they are kind of the same within the lore of this game anyway. Um, I mean, maybe he does hate the Jotna as well. Maybe he just hasn't really mentioned it yet. I guess that's possible as well. <laughs> and, I mean, there is already some cognitive dissonance going on with Kratos because he's a god himself. Or maybe he hates himself as well, who knows. But I wonder if he will ever, you know, tell us his thoughts about the Jotna. And if he does not hate the Jotna on principle, then I wonder why. Why he excludes them from this definition of God that he apparently applies to the Aesir and the Vanya. Maybe it has something to do with like self-identification. So if you consider yourself a God and want to be worshipped as a God, then you're evil and need to be destroyed. And maybe the Jotna didn't want to do that or didn't want that kind of worship, so they are fine with Kratos. <laughs> I have no idea, but at least from like a biological or you know physical um, level, there shouldn't really be much of a difference between um, the the Jotna and the Asia and the Vanya. Um, so it's kind of curious that he doesn't really seem to show any obvious hatred towards them. But yeah, um, I guess we're going to land our boat here. Well, here it is. It's got to have a weak point somewhere. Well, first of all, I see another Draugr in here. Level 5 Draugr even. What are you what are you doing here? I guess guarding the statue. Alright. That was easier than I expected. Anyway, can I Oh! 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 We have... <laughs> we have another one over here. <laughs> well, but apparently at the moment he is very much focused on Atreus. Alright. This is our chance to get in a few hits here. And, oh, I gotta evade that. I don't like being in this extremely close, close quarter. And, well, I can't, can't parry that, I'm afraid. Nope, I gotta evade that one. Alright, there we go. That's the last of them. Okay. Maybe I should just wait for Atreus to say that I'm I'm good before I start uh, focusing on other other things. I guess that's the reason why I couldn't open the chest because I was still in battle. Okay. 
Anyway, um, now we have to see what we can do about the statue. Oh, hang on a second. Maybe I'm going to start with a raven. Hmm. It's going to be fun. I need I need a better better angle on this. <laughs> Always keep missing by like just a few just a few inches. Still not still not right. Okay, here we go. Okay, now um I don't know, what happens if I just throw my axe at it? Nothing. But oh I see, there's some There he goes! How is he planning on doing this himself? <laughs> I have no idea, but he was a spirit and he may not have been quite sane. <laughs> Do we have more of these special Special spots. Yep, that looks more like Thor to me. With a hammer. It looks about ready to topple over. Okay. Well, I see more markings over here. Yeah, Thor. He wasn't so tough. <laughs> Gods do not fall this easily, boy. I know, I know. I was just joking. Nor yeah. are they a joking matter. Sorry. I guess the real Thor can't be defeated quite as easily. His father's grave. Find anything good? Perhaps. <laughs> Grip of Tengiost. Legendary X pommel. Low perk activation chance to strike with an explosion of lightning. It inflicts shock damage to all nearby enemies in, on any successful exit. Okay. Again, I will uh, study all my new items and my inventory at some point later. Ooh, what's going on there? There's like shiny water. Father, why did the gods cause so much trouble for us? Because that is their nature. <laughs> but with all that power, you would think at least some of them would try to make life better for people. And yet, the gods continue to spread misery. This is life, boy. Alright. Oh, is this something special? What did you find? A year's gold. Okay. I take it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess I will look around this place a bit and see if there's anything else for us to do. But it seems that we are limited by all these rocks in the water. Oh, is that more shiny water? It is. Huh, I haven't really been paying attention to that so far. Maybe I should look for more of these. Um, but yeah, there isn't, there isn't really much going on here, it seems, so... I suppose I will just head back, right? Back to the Lake of Nine. So we gotta go through here. Alright. Yeah, I guess I'll make my way back. Um, and uh, I'll bring you back once I've arrived, or if something special happens on, on the way back. <coughs> Alright, we are back at Brock's shop. Can we talk to you? Yeah, but nothing new. The work it is. Um, let me see. I found some stuff. Huh. 
can't upgrade this one. Yeah, I could upgrade this one. Uh, but what about the talisman that we found? Um, a monitor of Quasi. Yeah, this is the one I'm currently using. Hmm. I don't know. I may actually want to use this one. Of course, I will probably just forget to actually activate it in battle because I tend to forget about things like that. Just like I forget using Atreus's arrows all the time. <laughs> so maybe using one that only has a passive effect is not so bad. I mean, this is the, the rhyme shift, which I have seen activate on occasion. Um, I don't know. I will, I will think about this. I will think about this. But I can um, sell the artifact that I found. Oh, I have actually quite a few that I can sell. Okay, whatever helps, right? Yep, you can have all of this. And I actually have a lot of hex silver, so um, maybe at some point I do want to buy something. But there's really nothing that 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 grabs that grabs the eye at the moment. I mean, I feel upgrading this one won't hurt, so I'm going to do that. The other three. And don't be letting that spit pister of a brother of mine lay hands on it again. The. Don't worry. <laughs> I mean, always a pleasure. Now fuck right along. Surely I will. I will let Sindri upgrade the X, but I'm not going to tell Brock about it. Anyway, um, I still need to report back to the spirit um, and tell him that we destroyed the statue. So maybe let's do this next. Got some time left in this episode. Okay, here we are again, and I believe I have to land over here. Waterfall, sure is beautiful. They <laughs> really like those waterfalls. Also, um, I think I would like to close this gate and open the one in the back because we now have a different way to actually get inside that place so we can get to those chests. You there? Have you destroyed the statue? I sure did. The statue stands no longer, spirit. Then my bond to this realm is severed. And I am off to find the real god of thunder. <laughs> he will know retribution. My deepest gratitude. Well, good luck with that. Off he goes. Off he Praise goes. God. Want to look for Thor on his own? Because I'm not sure He's how. A fool. <laughs> what did the Why? spirit leave us? An offering to one of the gods. Can we use it? No, but perhaps the dwarves can. Okay. What did you find? Craft Tyr's armor. Bring Tyr's offering to Brock or Sindri. Huh. Okay. I mean, Brock and Sindri have the habit of showing up everywhere, so I'm sure I will uh, sooner or later meet one of them again. And yeah, I'm pretty sure I can't do anything about this at the moment because the water is still too high. But I can <laughs> open up this chest now. So let's do it. Golden Talisman of Protection. Rare Talisman. Activate immediately after being hit to recover faster. Also has a passive effect that increases the timing window on parries and greatly increases defense when blocking. Again, that sounds like a pretty neat talisman. So, I'm, I'm currently inclined to maybe change my talisman after all and just learn to use the activate thingy at some point. Uh, 
I mean, it's not difficult, but like I said, I just I just tend to forget about it. So, um, I guess we're done here. So the question is, what do we want to do next? I mean, I could go back to the horn and uh, use it, but maybe, maybe we actually want to take care of the other um, side mission. Head to Fafnir's storeroom. At least we can see if we can find the storeroom, right? Let's have a look at the map. Um, okay. I guess I have not been there yet. So I need to keep to my right past the world serpent and and we will find out if we can can reach it. I mean we still have some of these um veil tears all over this place that I left behind when I first found them. Anyway, and give me give me all of this. <laughs> Okay, um, it's, it's gotta be this opening over here, right? Yeah, I have been on this beach before, but I think I don't, don't have been to this place. Yeah, I think this is new. There we go. Fafnir's Ravine. Alright. Yeah, I guess I couldn't couldn't reach this before because the water was too high or maybe Jermangando was in the way. We can beach over here. Well, let's. Fafnir's storeroom. There we go. We found it. Let's start by destroying everything. Treasures from all different realms. Do you think that Fafnir went to Alfheim too? I do not know. <laughs> Aren't you curious? He sounds nope. interesting. We go to the storeroom to collect anything useful for our journey. Not to learn more about the dwarf. Fafnir <laughs> was a rather interesting fellow, little brother. Perhaps I'll tell you a story one day. <laughs> I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. And I'm sure it's going to be all wrong. <laughs> But like I said, I only I I only vaguely know about the story of Fafnir, so maybe I I will just accept it as fact. Um. Okay. I mean, this this can't be the actual storeroom, right? There's got to be more. Well, there's quite a bit of stuff already, so. At least creators can't complain about a lack of resources. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. I'm going to need your arrows for this. Well, um, just, just the dwarf I've been looking for, or one of them anyway. Okay, Mr. Gateway can't travel to this yet, as always. Hey, Sendry, could you take a look at this? Honestly? I don't have much else going on right now. <laughs> Yeah, um, apparently you already found Fafnir's storeroom, huh? Anyway, let's let's give that uh, fragment ah, to him. Ah, offerings to Tyr. These are quite rare, you know. Why? 
Well, you know Odin, not the biggest fan of Tyr. Uh -huh. I thought he destroyed all of these. Okay. So... Poor Fafnir. There's a fine line between ambition and greed, you know. Uh, yet, can you tell me more about these offerings? Hey, Sindri. Have you met Mimir? Uh, if you mean the severed head that keeps blinking <laughs> at me, please keep it away. There is no possible way that's hygienic. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Lovely to see you too, Sindri. Nob. <laughs> yeah, it's probably not hygienic. Why? Is that a piece of my braided mistletoe arrow adorning your quiver strap? <laughs> oh, a little memento of your good pal, Sindri. <laughs> I'm so terribly touched. Okay, well, now I'm convinced that this piece of mistletoe is going to play an important role later. I mean... When it was introduced, when, you know, Kratos used it to uh, fix Atreus, Atreus' quiver, I said, you know, this is kind of like Chekhov's gun. You know, when they introduce a seemingly random and unimportant item into the story, that will play a role later. And this right here seems to be an example of the so-called rule of three, which is basically when you, you know, use these um, Chekhov's gun items, is that you have a setup a reminder and then the payoff. So the setup was when you know he used the mistletoe to fix the quiver. Now Sindri is reminding us that we have this item so we don't forget about it and at some point there's going to be a payoff for it. I'm sure at some point uh, we will use this, this piece of mistletoe for something important. Um, anyway, can I destroy this over here? There we go. Let's get started then. So, um, ah, there we go. Now I can craft Tyr's Lost Unity Gauntlets. Um, I mean, it's reducing my runic powers, but it is probably worth the payoff. So I'm going to craft this one. Wear it in good health. <laughs> and I'm going to equip it. All right. Um, can I also, like, upgrade it while we're at it? Oh, I can. And I will. I think that's a key word. It does look pretty good. I will, I will say this. Looks better than what we had before, I think. Okay, um, for the next upgrade I need hardened Swadafheim steel, which I don't have. I don't know. Do you sell stuff like this by any, by any chance? Um, no, I don't think, I don't think I can buy this from him. And yeah, I haven't, I haven't made up my mind yet about the talisman, so, well, I will have to ponder on that for a while. And I mean, this is just the stuff that I can sell, so it looks like Sindri is not selling any kind of um, crafting resources. Was there more to discuss? Probably not. Um, but yeah, I may actually want to make a cut here and we will continue to explore Fafnir's storeroom, which I, I guess is somewhere around here because my quest marker is still a little bit in the distance and maybe we can find that whetstone for you, Sinri. But for now, uh, let's call it a day as always. Thank you for watching and see you again next time.